In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Zotero to cite within Google Docs. So if you're not able to use Word for whatever reason, you can also use Zotero to cite within Google Docs. So I'm within my um, a new Google document here. It's just an untitled document, so I can title it right here. We're going to call this um, steroid separation of isomers by ion mobility. So now I can go ahead and start writing. So you're probably going to want to create a title page first, obviously, if you're working with any form of manuscript. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with just um, my introduction. So I'm going to do my introduction. And then I can highlight this and go ahead and apply a heading one to it. And then I can start writing in here. So I can say, so steroid analysis is an essential part of medical diagnosis and environmental testing. However, steroids have a high degree of isomerism that makes them difficult to distinguish by typical analytical techniques. If I'm making statements, I need to start actually citing here. So to be able to get Zotero to show up in your Google Docs, you probably you need to have the Zotero connector installed. I will link above to the Chrome extension Zotero connector. You just need to put it in and install it. And the first time you go to do a um, citation, it's going to ask you to give access to the Google account that you're currently working in. It needs that access to be able to update or edit anything within this account. So just to let you know, if you get that, you do need to give it that access first. And then I can come up here and click add. And what it's going to do is it's going to pop up this Zotero document preferences. And if you're not seeing it or if it's doing something funny, if all you're seeing is this and nothing else is happening, you may need to actually open up your Zotero first because this is actually a pop up within that Zotero. It's not a pop up within Google Docs. So just in case you're not seeing things happen normally, um, that is what's happening there. So now I'm just going to select one so I can select the, let's just do the Journal of, of the American Chemical Society. You can automatically update citations um, and then you can use the journal of Medline Journal abbreviations instead of the journal abbreviations in there. So we're going to click OK. And so then you get this search bar that pops up. And if you've ever worked within Microsoft Word, you know that this is a very similar search bar that pops up here. You can um, do the classic view and be able to see all of your papers within here. So this is actually a way for you to be able to say, okay, I'm only working in my steroids and eye mobility, and I only want these papers in here. So I want this review as what I'm citing here. So right now this is a single source. It, if I try and click another source, it's not gonna let me keep all of them. So you can click multiple sources here and you can sort or you can move things over that you want to cite. So maybe I want to cite that one, but I also want to cite this one here. And so I can move it over and now I'm going to cite two different papers here. And we can keep the sort so that I'm actually controlling the sort here. And then I can click OK. So what that did is it's adding this one and two in here. So this is how I'm going to be able to access it. Now let's say, okay, I cited this one, but now I need to come back up and cite this one. So I can come up here. You can click here or you can hit this Control Alt C. So if I hit Control Alt C instead, you see that it's still going to bring up this. I can just search within this box here. So I'm going to specifically search for medical and I'm going to look for this review steroid analysis for medical diagnoses and I'm going to click that. And then to get out of this one, all I have to do is hit space and it's going to move me out of that citation. And then I can search for another one. I can search for testing here and I'm just going to add um, one of these. Obviously, these are coming from different collections. So if you don't keep um, all of your collections to where everything is actually separated, you actually probably want to use that classic view so you know that you're pulling the same one every time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then when I press enter, it's going to add those in. So now you can see that this is one, two, and this is now three, four. And that's the biggest benefit of something like Zotero is now we can always go back and cite more and more previously, and it keeps all of that formatting similar. So now let's say I finished writing everything and I'm going to have my bibliography. Obviously you want to work with whatever um, actual 
your actual journal calls the bibliography. Sometimes it's works cited and sometimes it's references. I'm just gonna have the bibliography there. So now what I wanna do is go into Zotero and I'm gonna click add edit bibliography. And so you can see it's updating in here and now it's updating this. So now what if I came back and if I wanted to add another citation in here and I click on it, I can click edit with Zotero. It's gonna pull this back up. So these are the two I'm currently citing. I'm gonna go ahead and go into classic view and it keeps those two here. And so within steroids and eye mobility, let's say I wanna add this one as well. So we can move that one over and I'm gonna click okay. And so now you can see this says three through five and it automatically added five down here. And so this is how you can keep all of your citations normalized. Now, let's say you've completed your article, but you got rejected from Jax. Jax doesn't want your paper. So now you need to move it to a different article. So we can go into Zotero. We're going to say document preferences. And this is now going to again pop up that same thing that we popped up when we first started writing. Again, this is a part of the Zotero desktop view. So if you're not seeing it, open up your Zotero and your tabs and make sure that you're within that. And let's say they now, we're gonna submit to analytical methods instead. And we're gonna click okay. So now you can see that without me having to do anything else, I'm automatically getting the updated bibliography here. And if this had changed as well, I would be getting the updated in-text citations as well. Just to show you the um, in-text citations, I'm gonna go to document preferences and do American APA because I know what that looks like. So now you can see that this here is um, updated correctly. This is how this should be cited. However, the, you're not done once you do this because now what you can see is your period is before this citation here. And it shouldn't be that way with APA. Your period actually needs to go to the outside of your citation. So this is one thing that you are going to need to do um, if you are editing this. Um, you are going to need to make sure that you are following all the other rules with that citation style. So the most common one is where the punctuation goes. With superscripts, it tends to go outside the punctuation and with brackets or per parentheses, it tends to go inside the punctuation. So that's one thing to be aware of. Zotero is not gonna automatically change that for you. It's only going to change how it appears in the actual document. So I hope this helps you. If you're working with Google Docs and you still wanna use Zotero, you definitely can. It works very similarly to how it works within Microsoft Word. So I will leave a few videos up here all about more about how to use Zotero. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.